Joshua says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And of course, one day, <clears throat> we have, in Matthew chapter 22, um, this, this young man came to Jesus. And he says there in verse 24, 34? I guess it's 34. Having, uh, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them came to Jesus, an expert in of the law, or in the law, testing him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? What is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, verse 37, come on, you are in your, okay, it's not there anymore. Let's read together. Love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That's it. Which tells me that the first commandment is to love God. Before we begin to love our houses and our lands, our girlfriends and boyfriends, and all those things, the first command for mankind is for him to love God. Love God first. And somehow, you know, we tend to put God second or third in our priority list. But God will not accept anything else but first. First. Jesus Christ said it so beautifully there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He says, Seek ye first. Come on, say to me, please. Seek ye first. Which tells me that yes, God wants us to get other things. But he's saying, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then everything else will be given to us. So maybe, Pastor Church, the reason why we are lacking is because we put things and then God done. Below. You know, someone sent me a clip some time ago and says, where does the church, where does the church fit in society? And of course, I, I thought, well, the church should be number one. But unfortunately, the church comes up at number eight or number nine. And do you know who people have more confidence in? As the show, people place more confidence in the fire department. Now the fire department may say, my passport and so forth, but I can't do anything for my soul. The police department, as good as they are, I wouldn't even trust them to protect my family. <laughs> but people put the police department up there too. And that church, which is supposed to be the light of the world, is done at number eight. And maybe we are responsible for that. Maybe we are. But See that, that we are commanded to love God first. Here is the problem with that statement. We really do not know how to love or how to use love properly. We have a problem with that word love. That four letter word. Because many of us have been taught to love by Hollywood or by the streets or by family and friends who have no clue what love is. As a matter of fact, by the way, what I've found in our society we love things and use people. Can I have an amen? amen? We love things. We love the car. We love everything. We attach love to things. And when it comes to people, we say we use them. We don't really care. But we, we get the second commandment in the midst. The first is to love God. Love God. So really, what really is love? So last week, we decided we will talk about uh, about that. How do we protect our relationship with God? First of all, I want you to know that God is a relational God. T.D. Jake said that relationship is the currency of heaven. So it tells me that God wants to relate to mankind. Yeah. To show you how this is true, that even in Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus Christ was teaching the disciples, he said, when you pray, to say, oh, God. Just, he did not say to say, oh God. He said, when you pray, say, our, which tells me that God is relational. He's all about relational. As a matter of fact, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, if you bring your gift to the altar, and then you remember your brother has a broken relationship with you, he says, leave the gift there, go back and fix it, and then come and offer a gift to me. Which tells me that even if I do not treat my wife right, 
I can't even go to God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. The Bible says, if you, husbands, believe you can treat your wife anyhow and come before me. You know, some of us believe we can walk over people and get to God. God is saying, uh-uh. Uh-huh. Right. Go back and fix that stuff first. Right. So God is relational. He's all about relationship. God's all about relationship. So first of all, how do we protect our relationship with God? Because this is very important. My relationship with God is utmost important to me. Now, there's a difference because I realize that there are people who go to church but really has no relationship with God. They have a relationship with the church. They have a relationship with a man. Some even have a relationship with the Bible. But really, they have no clue of who God is. No clue. None. I'm going to show you how this is so true. One of the disciples one day, church of the 40, he came before Jesus. And he said to Jesus, Rabbi, if you would just show us the Father, that would be enough for us. <laughs> he thought he could see God. <laughs> but John chapter 4 says, God is spirit. God is spirit. So of course, Jesus the him and says, man, have I been among you for so long and yet you do not know me? He who sees me has seen the Father. Which tells me that there are folks who go to church all the time. But they do not know God. And, and, and let me show you how you know those who know God from those who don't. I show you. Because the Bible says, man that is born of a woman, they are few days and they are full of trouble. Which says, man, trouble will hit everybody. Whether you're saved or not saved, trouble come to your door, steps. Or oh, you don't believe it, keep on living. Amen. Amen. Trouble come to your door, and, and what I've observed, Pastor Timmons, is this. That there are some folks who, if if I shake Pastor Wayne's hand, I shake, I shake your hand, shake Pastor Lisa, take mm-hmm. over you and shake Pastor Shirley, then shake it, then shake it. Guess what? He backs up his Bible and he's mad with me. And you leave the church. Not coming to church for two or three weeks. anymore. Like if it's about me, the church is not about me. I am just the messenger pointing you to the way. That's all I am. So if you should have a relationship with me, you are putting your faith in the wrong person. Because let me tell you today, I can't help you. I could barely help myself. I got a wife over here, some children, I could barely help them. So if you're looking at me to help you right away, I'm bursting a little bubble because most likely you will be disappointed in me. I know all of you in here are saved, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. Amen. Amen. Me, the Lord is still working on me. Amen. Tell you now, the Lord is still working on me. He's working on me. So please do not put your trust Amen. in me. Let me say it on this side. Please, I'm begging you. Yes, Pastor is trying to live right, but do not put your trust in me. Because I might fail. And if I fail, that means that you will fail also. But if you could bypass me and see the cross, if you could bypass me and see Jesus, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what I do. Because your faith is anchored inside. Yeah. So the Bible says, Love who? Love the Lord your God with all, not with some. Oh. With everything about you. He says, Love for that scripture like this. And love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. He said, He said, Love God. Not love me. Love God. God is the one who rescued you. God is the one who saved you. He is your keeper. He is your healer. He is everything to you. He is your father. Love God. Well, of course, we have to take a look at that word for love. But let me give you some, some ways that you can protect your relationship with God first. Number one, the way you protect your relationship with God is to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The reason why I'm saying this is because for those of you who took Pastor Massey's class on um, analyzing the gifts, if you she did for over a month, Pastor Massey took the time to share with us the difference between the flesh 
or the carnal nature or the natural man and the spirit. Now, what is the flesh? You may say, Pastor, when you talk about the flesh, are you talking about this thing here? No, no, no. I'm speaking about a heart, that thing, that part of you that, that God says that gives us the most trouble, the heart. From the heart flows all the junk because we have opened ourselves to all the mercy. Hey, my brother, my sister took the time to share with us that because our DNA is made up of sinful things, that means that we are sinful. Amen. 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 I know you all are saved in here, but we are sinful beings. Amen. 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 We were born in sin. Therefore, nobody's perfect. Can I see the hands of those in this room that are perfect? Oh, good. But I told you I need to hit the altar. Amen. <laughs> Everybody in this room, their DNA is made up of sin. If you notice, you do not have to teach a child to do wrong. It's the natural part of the child to do wrong. Some of us are grown. And it's very easy for us to do wrong. It's difficult for us to do the right because of our makeup. Sinful. So, Pastor, it's a good time to share with us the difference between the flesh and the spirit. You could find it all there. Take this note down. Take this scripture down. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Two scriptures. You guys look at them and you get home. So, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, that we need to live by the spirit. Yeah. So, we're not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Yeah. Which tells me that it's very easy when it comes to decision making. For me to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to me. Because my natural inclination is to move by what I see. Yes. Because God has given us these five senses. And we look, we look at things. Or we hear stuff. And we tend to make decisions. And fail to recognize that God has something to say. Yes. About the decisions that we make. Yes. Some of us have made some poor decisions. In relationships. We'll talk about that later. Amen. Some of us have made decisions in going to financial things with people and hurt badly. But live by the Holy Spirit. Number two, I, I need to spend time. I need to share this with you. Number two, not only listen to the Holy Spirit and what he has to say to you, but number two, love to commune with God. It's, to, it's called prayer. Come on, say to me, please. Prayer. It's called what? Prayer. <laughs> Some people pray sporadically. And there are some who pray only when they are in trouble. And there are some who really do not know how to pray. Yes, of course. And here at Destiny, we have made it our business to teach people, like Jesus taught the disciples, how to pray. So many of us have learned to recite what you call the Lord's Prayer. Let us try today to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those relationship. I must stop right there. It's amazing that Jesus put in that peace in the prayer. Because brothers and sisters, you see, when we die and go up to heaven and are dwelling with Abraham and Elijah and all of them, oh, that will be glory. But you see, to live down here with our brothers and sisters, that's another story. Because sometimes it's more difficult to live with people. Or you don't know. <laughs> With the help of that prayer, that Jesus took the time to address that part again about forgiveness in verse 14 of that same Matthew yes, chapter 6. Yes, yes. Verse 12 and verse 14. Yes. He took time. As a matter of fact, he says, if you fail yeah. to forgive folks, yeah. if you decide, I am not forgiving you, God is saying, I am not forgiving you either. So which tells me to forgive is a command. Yeah. Come and say to me, please. Okay. To forgive is a command. Yeah. We do not have an option when it comes to forgiveness. We are commanded to forgive. 
that, let's get back to relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Love to commune with God. Amen. Here at Destiny, we have multiple times of prayer, and it's intentional that we set those times up for prayer, that you can find yes. space yes. to pray with people. There are folks who have learned to pray by coming to pray. Yes. They come, and they sit behind somebody, or they sit with somebody who have learned to pray. And that's how they learn to pray. I mean, we have different times of prayer. We have a pre-service prayer on Sunday morning here. Yeah. Service begins at 10.45, not at 11. It's at 10.45. And this morning, Pastor Shirley, who are here, leading us in prayer. She's not praying for you all. Uh -uh. She said, let us. Come on, say it with me. Let, let us. us. That's different. Let us. Let us pray. Jesus took the time to teach us how to pray, which means that in order for you and I to pray effectively, we've got to be taught. Yes. There's no way that you can just pray and believe that your prayer is going to be heard or not. Yes, we know the Lord here, everybody pray, but some of us pray sporadically. We pray, and Lord, bless this food, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, but you're getting ready to go into a job. You know, they fire you today. You have no clue of the hell you face on that job. You need some help from above. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Listen, even in your own home, if you are married and you have some children, <laughs> you better talk to him about them. Let me tell you why. The scripture says foolishness yes. is bumped up in the heart yes, yes, yes. of the children. Come on. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. The scripture says, foolishness is wrapped up in the heart of a child. Yeah. And the rod of correction, I used to think, but imagine that he's talking about a bet. <laughs> rod of correction will drive it from them. Yes? You know, God gave us five children. I tried up on all of them. <laughs> well, look, so, so my kids will say to me, Daddy, how come the grands are getting away with some stuff? That's because I got professional, I got, I tried and I won. So I, I learned now what it means by the real first. Let's go, down, let's go, down. I need to go. Down. I got so much to say to you. Number three. So number one, live, listen to the Holy Spirit. Number two, love to commune with God. Number three, let the word of God guide you. Get into the scriptures. It's the reason why I encourage you to buy. A Bible. And I know we live in a day where um, social media, what do you call this thing here? This is an iPhone and all this stuff. <laughs> around these days, I mean, and you could, these smartphones, and you could get the Bible in your electronic device and all that good stuff. And yes, this is good. But I want you to get a book. It's cheaper than a movie ticket. Get yourself a good book. And I want you to find the pages, learn the books of the Bible. For example, if I say, let's turn to the book of Nahum. Some of you will say, Nahum, is that a fool? I mean, because I have no clue. What am I talking about? I want you to be familiar with the word of God. That David says, thy word have I not in my mind. Your word have I placed inside of me. So that I won't sin against you. The thing that keeps us from going off track is what? The word of God. Yes. Get into the Bible. Yes? You perhaps say, yeah, but Pastor, but we, we, this church doesn't have Bible study. Yes, we do. <laughs> you didn't know we have Bible study. But let me let you know. The two main services of this church is Bible study and the Word on Sunday morning. Yes. And Bible study, we are going through the book of Romans. Thank you. The ones who know is the ones who are here. The book of Romans. We are taking our time and going through the book of Romans. So that you can teach you the word of God. So that you can have the word of God hidden inside of you. Yeah. So you can begin to live by the word. Yeah. Live by the word of God. Next. Yes, I mean, okay. Next. Lay yourself down in worship. Listen, surrender to God. Worship should not be something that you do on Sundays, please. 
Thank God for the musician, the pastor, you and the worship team and all of that. Ah, uh ah. -uh. If you are waiting for Sunday morning to worship, you miss it. Amen. Worship is your lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Amen. It's a lifestyle. Amen. Every single, listen, when I wake in the morning, my hands automatically shoot up to God and tell him thanks for allowing me to see another day. Just giving him thanks, you spend time lifting your voice to God in praise and worship. Just not asking him for anything. You are thanking him for who he is and for what he's getting ready to do today. So we get together here. Brothers, we encourage brothers to pray with brothers and sisters to pray with sisters unless you are married. If you are married, you pray with your spouse. But if you are unmarried, we encourage your brothers to get together. So the brothers get together in a corner somewhere. And we there, we are praying. On Saturday mornings, we are made intentional that on Saturday mornings we will pray a covering over our families. So when I'm there on Saturday morning, I'm praying for my wife. I'm praying for our sister who lost her husband in Trinidad. I'm praying for their children. I'm praying for our children. I'm praying for my grandchildren. And all we have is 60 minutes. Wow. Hear me, please. It's not a whole lot of time. I have a big family. Time I finish praying for my wife and just, just these people, along with her sister. Guess what? They're always gone. I didn't get time to pray for you, Pastor Shirley. I don't have time to pray for, for Deacon Gloria. I don't have time to pray for my pastor, myself, Pamela. I, I, I don't have time to pray for you, Fritz. I mean, time, I get through with just my family. That 60 minutes is gone. Wow. Amen. Which means that if your family is not being covered, you can't blame me because you can't expect me to leave my family uncovered and cover yours. Wow. Every single man, and I've been saying it over and over again, every single man is responsible for covering your family. Covering your family. Praying for your spouse. Pray for your children. Pray for your sisters. Pray for your brothers. You are supposed to cover them. The Lord says in Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 10, He says, I am looking for someone among them, one who would stand in the gap. On behalf of me, someone smacked the land of the curse, and I found none. Very sad statement. Now, here is my question to you. Is God looking over your family and saying, I'm looking for somebody who will pray? I'm looking over your family. I must say my name, the Cooper's household. The Cooper's household doesn't just, just consist of me and my wife. I have eight siblings. I have eight siblings. And some of my sisters are here and brothers, and I'm praying for them too. There is no way that one hour could cover all of these people. And if there are three of us praying, and of course we encourage two or three, so if it's three of us, it means that me, my wife, and Pastor Egil. here. So if I'm praying for them, when I'm finished, my wife is praying. Time my wife is praying, Pastor Egil is praying. And Pastor Egil is praying for all those people. Time we are finished. That's it. There's no way we can cover everybody in 60 minutes. Wow. I'm saying this to you because you may say, Hallelujah. How can you pray for one hour? Mm. Well, I, 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 I'm going to get to spouse some other stuff. We, we get that. I need to go somewhere with this place. Let's help me worship. And number four or number five, be intentional about living holy. Protect your relationship with God. Prepare to live holy. Say goodbye to the stuff that you used to do. Let them go. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Behold, if any man be in Christ. In Christ. Come on, say to me, please. In Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. Live holy. Joshua said to the people, If serving God seems undesirable to you, then choose today who you will serve. If you will serve God, then serve Him. That's what Joshua is saying. If I'm going to live this Christian lifestyle, let me live. Don't mess with me. With my faith in God. It's time for us to get serious about this thing. I do not want when it's all said and done. The Lord said to me, depart from me, I don't know you. There's some of you who go to church. 
or their life. And they have no knowledge of who God is. Do not let that say, be said about you. Let, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, I'm trying to get you some, some good stuff here. Amen, amen. Praise amen. the Lord. And so we've been speaking about order, the, the year of order. It's been order in relationships. I've seen that God is a God of order. I realized that every relationship, every relationship requires these three things. Number one, love. Every relationship requires love. Every relationship requires trust. And every relationship requires faithfulness. Every relationship. Relationship with God, relationship with man, relationship with your children. Every relationship requires you to trust. Trust love is a very important word because I have found out that you cannot buy trust. Trust is not something that you can purchase. Trust is something you must what? Yeah. Hey, come on, send me, please. Yeah. You got it. Hey. <laughs> trust. Now, if a young man should walk up to a young woman one day, he doesn't know her, see her, and says, I love you, that's a lie. Let me just say to you, sister, right here, to me. <laughs> to you, sister, that right here. If a young man walk up to you, you don't know her from Adam, but he will walk up to you and say, Baby, I love you. Just tell him, stop lying. <laughs> because really, he can't love what he does not know. Right. He has no clue who you are. What he is moved by, he is moved by what he sees. Coca-Cola shit. I mean, I mean, that's in his mind. Because he's filled with L-U-S-T. He's filled with what? Lust. Now, of course, next few months, my wife and I be celebrating 40 years of marriage, and I want you to know that the very first time when I saw a girlfriend back there in Trinidad, she was on the stage singing like one of these fine young ladies here. Like, she said, Gloria, it's the bird. If a young man comes to you, bring him to me first. Right? <laughs> We are called to watch. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. She was singing and leading worship, and just like you guys, one ten pounds. Oh man! <laughs> so when I saw her, I says, "I love you, and I want to marry you." And she says, mm -hmm, "Thank you," because my wife believed that I understood what love is, but. She didn't realize that I learned love from the streets. <laughs> she did not know, Brother Martin, that I had no clue of what love is. No. Because if I understood what love is, I don't think I would be ready to say I do. <laughs> because I did not know the price for that big word. The street tells me that love is S-E-X. That's what the street says. So every time I think of love, I think of bed or the bedroom. Sisters are not thinking that way. When a sister says, I love you, she's not thinking about, oh man, you get your hands off me. Because I'm not thinking what you're thinking. My God's love. Yeah. Protect, concern over my well being. Because if the scripture is accurate in Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says, no, sorry, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Can you stop right there, please. For God so loved the world. Not the Jews, but the Jews and Gentiles. For God so love you. Yes. That tells me that love is what? Given. Love is? Given. Talk to me, somebody. Love is given. Lust isn't. Because lust takes. What can I get out of this relationship? What is in this relationship for me? Well, oh yes. But I pray that the 
Lord would help our young ladies today. Yes. And especially yes. these days where all kinds of stuff is out there. Yes. And the men have mixed up this word for, for a man to tell another man, I love you. But, I mean, listen, I think we need that alone. I need to go somewhere. <laughs> So, love really is having others' benefits at your expense. So, a few days ago, we celebrated Valentine's Day. And those of us who have a companion in our lives, we try to go the way to make them feel special. But please hear me. We, do, we are not supposed to make them feel special just on Valentine's Day. Amen. Wow. <laughs> but I'm going to ask all the brothers that are here to stand, please. <laughs> Thank you. All the men who are married, all the men, all the men, if you are married, stand up, sir. There are two days that you do not want to ever forget in your life. Two days. Two days. Remember these two days, please. The first day, you do not. Why, why Brother George is sitting? Huh? Oh, you not, oh yes, yes. Well, Brother George, still stand because you have to talk to your daughters. Amen. Sister, <laughs> that's right. Sister, you got gifted back there and you have to talk to them. Amen. So when the young man comes, say, listen, Pastor Cooper says, this one you need to do. Two days. First day that you do not want to ever forget is the birthday of her. You do not, brothers, listen to me, please. Do not forget her birthday. You wouldn't hear the last of it, I'm telling you. And please remember this, that woman speaks 20,000 words a day. And brother speaks seven. And so of us, we ain't got seven. I know I got 7,000. I mean, Pastor Terry's got a lot, but I ain't got that. You do not want to forget what? Huh? Thank you. Number two, you do not want to forget her and your anniversary day. Yeah, because, listen to me, you forget that anniversary, you better find another bed to sleep on. She will not forgive you for failing to remember her anniversary. God bless you. May take your seats. <laughs> love, love. And because every, every relationship must have love and trust and faithfulness, today, for the little time we have, let us explore this word called love. Because really, many of us really have no clue of what really love is. It's no wonder Paul says in verse 11 of 1 Corinthians chapter 30, when I was a child, I, I talked like a child. I behaved like a child. See? But when I became a man, when I become grown, when I become mature, I leave childish ways because what happened is that some of us believe that we are grown. But really we are not. We are struggling with some boyhood behaviors. Yes. I, I'm going to get to you sisters and me. I'm going to get to you sisters and me. I'm going to get to you sisters and me. But I just want to talk to us. The men become talking about order in our home. And order, God begins with order. With who? With that. With that, man. with the man. God made the man first. And he said to the man, I want to walk this garden and protect this garden. He didn't say to the woman. He says to the man, I'm calling you to be the priest, the protector, the provider, and the prophet. Oh, the four Ps. That's why I'm calling you, the man. Sisters, God called you to help us because we have no clue what we're doing. Amen. God called you.
to help us do what God has called us to do. So it's not about love. Can you put from verse 4 of that same scripture up on the screen, please? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Let us take a look at love. And please understand that this love is not just talking about marriage. It's not talking about husband and wife. It talks about God's definition of love. Let us, so let, let, the way that I relate to Pat, the way I relate to you, the way I relate to my enemies, love. Paul says in verse 9 of Romans chapter 12, he says, love must be sincere, which tells me that they are counterfeit loves. So love. So let's read together. Love is what? Amen. Wow. Mm. Sister Brooke, when I'm asking, when I'm talking to the Father, Lord, I thank you for being patient with me. Because at times time when I know the Lord wants to drop his wrath upon me. But I thank God for his mercies. He's saying a man ought to love his wife like Christ loved his church. <laughs> Pastor, why are you blushing? Love is patient. Honey, I thank you for being patient with me. You don't know the stuff that she had to go through. Not me. See, because you see, you don't see me. You only know me when you see me on Sunday morning. She is with me 24-7, 365 days. The next few days will be celebrated 40 years Amen. that she had to tolerate me. <laughs> 40 years. God, my wife would say to me from time to time, when God was offering patience, he missed you. <laughs> he gave you <laughs> Forgot you, just bypass you and give it to others. Love is patient. Think, brothers and sisters, of how we deal with each other. Are we patient with one another in their flaws? Or are we quick to judge people? We look at them through the eyes or the lens of judgment. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 says, Judge not. And sometimes we, we, we tend to remove the speck from our brother's eyes while there's a plant sticking up from our eyes. Yeah. We are not patient with people and everything hinges on love. So patience is connected with love. Let's go on. Kindness. How do we treat one another? You know, um, Brother Books, I was talking to a, a, a young man who came to see me complaining about his wife. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, well, what's the problem? His wife, when she dressed in the morning, she would leave some powder on the arm. On the arm. And dress it. Because the ladies fix up and the you know, ladies, they do that thing. I mean, I don't have a problem. Why is he coming to waste my time? <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys see it? He's coming to complain to me about his wife messing up the dresser. What do I care about what happened to his hands? If he don't like the way the powder is there, then wipe the thing down. That's the good, but he squeezed the toothpaste from the middle. What do I care about the toothpaste? I mean, stupid little things. He will make a mountain of it. We speak to one another unkindly. If we in the church, sometimes we are abrasive in the way we talk to one another. I'm not even going to your home as yet. We're just talking about brothers and sisters in the faith. Sometimes you talk to a sister, I don't know, I mean, you talk to a brother or sister, and they want to fight you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sitting inside the office one time, and somebody, I mean, he and she couldn't get along. She is swearing. And, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor Cooper. Ah, ah, that's what is in your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're not kind. <laughs> Kindness is attached to love. <laughs> 
So if I am being aggressive and snapping at you at every moment, every little thing, and I'm not eating that food. Why do you burn the chicken? I mean, all kind of nonsense. What do I care? Do not let my ears hear that crap, please. Don't tie up my phone. Don't call me. If you love her, if you love him, deal with it. Well, you I mean, so posting that I have a marriage made in heaven. Uh -uh. Girlfriend and I, we have to work at our marriage to get it to 40 years. So those of you who believe that we have a nice night, say love. <laughs> uh -uh. We are children too. So the same trouble you face, we face. Same situation, none, no different. Let's go on. Love is not only patient, it's not patient, kind. Love does not end. If your friend is making more money than you, make, give God the praise. <laughs> if she has to work some more hours, and when you come home, you got to clean the kitchen, wash the dishes, Make something for girlfriend to eat. Go right ahead. Fix up. So when girlfriend coming, then I sit back, take off her shoes, fix up nice, and you know what to do. Amen. The rest is history. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Love does not. Work. It does not. We only take our time with this. Love does not boast. If God has elevated you to that position, and you are blessed. Help somebody. Don't try to. Listen, I sat with a pastor this week. There's two, one of them, but I sat with one of them this week. And he was sharing with me his concern as he's spending some health challenges. And he's talking to me. And he's asking me about the ministry and so forth. And I said, well, the Lord has really been good to us and so forth. But I want to hear about your ministry, sir. Give me a sense. The ministry has been around longer than mine. And he shared with me some of the physical challenges he's having. I said to him, man, I'm keeping you in prayer. Keeping you in prayer. I'm not boasting. Thank God for destiny and destiny in Randolph and in Boston. And thank God for what the Lord is doing there in Randolph and here in Boston. But it has nothing to do with me. If I'm gonna boast, I gotta boast in Christ. Let's move on. Let's move on. It is not proud. Not proud. No one to brothers and sisters, no one to speak. No way to shop. No. And yes, there are times when you will find some things are not going the way that you want it to go. Don't boast. See, that is the reason is that I buy you like that is because you're ignorant. Uh uh, everybody's ignorant. Everybody. Everybody. Let's move on, please. Love does not. You understand the people. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. You know, I, I, when the Lord gave me the phrase, people are our business, and I got all kinds of plaques at my house that, they, they, that people gave to me and says, Pastor Cooper, the people's pastor. Because I really believe the reason why Christ came into this world is for people. I, I don't think Christ came to die for all dogs go to heaven. No. I don't think Christ came to die for the trees. No. Yeah. If you kick a dog here, you go to jail. If you shoot somebody, you get out of me. What kind of mess, you know? <laughs> it is not self. It is not. Look at, look at this one. It is not easily angered. Yes. It is not easily upset. That you got to drag Pastor Cooper over to your house to talk to you about girlfriend leaving some powder or oh, then burn the chicken. I mean, leave me alone. Every time you think about my name, you think, oh, God help Pastor Cooper, Sister Cooper. Just, just, just when, when you think, I, I have some problem in my wife, and let me call Pastor No, no, don't call me. Just pray, Lord, help Pastor Cooper, Sister Cooper. That's what you need to do. <laughs> It's not easily anger. So because people, your blood is so close to your skin. Some of us are cheap. 
And I'm glad it's going on air. So I was like, shit. And if our wife decided, well, can we go for dinner tonight? Yes, we're going to McDonald's. Listen, sisters, tell them no McDonald's for me today. Legal seafood. Cheesecake factory. Amen. in this world. You and I need to make a difference in the places where we are employed. When our employee or our, our employer, so our employer, or those who are our peers, look at us, they ought to see something different about us. If we are just like the good old boys, there's something wrong. And, and see that the Bible says, first, we must love God. And the second says, we must must love our neighbor like ourselves. Here is the catch. Because if you love, what the Bible is defining here as love is required from every one of us. It means that in order to do this, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, must take place in our lives. When a child spoke as a child, so I let, let childhood be eight years ago. We basically must grow up. Come and say to me, please. We need to what? Grow up. So anytime my wife does something wrong, I don't say, you're on your own. I'm gone. Pat my little doggy back. I'm not so good. See you next week. Oh, I'm not sleeping in the bed with you because you did something that upset me. What? No. And I know these are hard messages. But we need to get back to what Jesus Christ says. He says, by this shall all people know that you are my disciples. If we have love one towards another. Love is very important. As a matter of fact, it's the thing that keeps us going. 
because we love one another. Not this come to feel love, not this I'm going to abuse you or to misuse you, but it's genuine. I'm patient with you. I'm kind. I'm not holding you. Love forgives. Love holds no record of wrongs. I don't hold against you. Hell, you remember last week? You spend all the money buying a new pair of shoes. And this time, you know, they are hard. Can't pay the mortgage. Can't pay the rent. Listen, I, I, I'm speaking to you guys because I can speak about this. Because the area that the church is weakened in this area of love. No wonder Jesus spends so much time talking about love. Because really, we do not know how to love. We do not know how to love. So you ask the Lord, teach me how to love. So when I married a girlfriend, she came to America. I did not have anyone to teach me how to love. I know what the scripture says, but how to do it is a problem. I know what God requires of me, but how to do it was a problem. So I began to pray. Lord, teach me how to love her. Teach me, oh God. Now, I told you guys before, I never had a problem in hugging ladies. But to, to hug, I, I, I would tell a man, I love you. Especially these days, I'm okay to tell a man, I love you. But now I could say I love you because of the three forms of love. There is a capio, there is phileo, and there is eros. Now when I say I love you to a brother, I'm not talking about the third one. I'm speaking about the brotherly love that God expects us to have with one another. She just gave an example of a man traveling from one city to another. He got mugged by some bandits. They beat him up, robbed him, tossed him in a ravine and left him there to die. And here we have folks from the church <coughs> walk by, saw him in the ravine. What did they do? They turned their face and walked away. And we have a world of people that are dying out there. I said, can somebody help me? And we turn a deaf head. Walk away. And here comes another fellow. A fellow, as a matter of fact, the Bible called him a Samaritan. Of the church. We are the only ones, we are the only ones who shoot our wounded. We shoot our wounded. We don't care. Here is this man. He's going somewhere. Saw the human being in the rabbit. Came off his donkey. Went down in the old miss the briefcase. Took us some medication. Wrapped him up. Took him up put him on his donkey, and went to the urgent care. Said to them, this man was dying, brought him, picked him up. Open his wallet, give him some money, he says, take care of him. What do they cost? If it costs more when I return, I'll pay the bill. He says, didn't ask the man, do you pay tithes? I'm going somewhere because these are hard messages. That is your name on the church rasta. Do, do, do you pray for somebody? Are you a part of the church? Uh, what church you belong to? Oh, no questions asked. He just did what he's supposed to. Let us stop bickering with one another. Let us stop fighting with one another. We can fight for each other, but not against each other. Let love be sincere as Paul has encouraged us. And Jesus Christ says, this is the only way that men will know that you belong to me if you have love one to another. I want that love not just to be seen among the church or outside, but I want that love first to be fed in my home, in my wife, my children, my grandchildren, folks who come to my home and see me how I live. That's why I can speak like this because I'm trying desperately to live according to this book. And this is where I'm pushing you to try to live according to the word of God. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Next time we are together, let's speak about trust. Trust, trust, trust. There are so many today, there are so many ministries who do not allow anybody else to be part of the ministry except families, simply because trust has been broken. And therefore, they don't trust people.
But Jesus, Jesus, he looked at 12 men who were imperfect. He looked at 12 men who were weak. He looked at 12 men and he said to them, I'm putting inside of you what you need to continue this mission. He entrusted us with the responsibility of sharing this gospel with our lost and dying world. You are here today and I sound my voice. And now the Holy Spirit is convicting you. He may be convicting you of where you are in this whole area of love. Even in where is God on your priority list. And if Jesus says to love the Lord your God, because Joshua says, as for me and my house, first, we will serve God. But Joshua challenged the people. If God, if serving God seems undesirable to you, choose today who you will serve. But as for me, he's saying, as for me and my house, we have made a commitment. We will serve God. God will be a first priority in my life. You are here saying, Pastor Cooper, I hear you, but there is so much disagreement in my home. I say, let's go to the right. Yes. My spouse says, let's go to the left. I say, let's go up. They say, let's go down. We cannot make any headway. Instead of moving forward, we find ourselves going backwards. And the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you. I believe because God loves you so much, he wants to help you today in your relationships. Not only the relationship in your own home, but the relationship with somebody. And maybe as I'm speaking to you, there is some relationship that has been fractured. Somebody whom you know have hurt you, or you have hurt. And God wants to fix that today. He wants to mend that broken relationship. Perhaps you took communion from time to time and you're saying, oh God, give you wisdom and the goal is to go to that brother, that sister, whom I've wronged. I want to live a life that pleases your God. And you say, Pastor Cooper, can you pray for me? Oh, just stick your hands up to heaven and take it back down. Just stick it up to heaven. Please, Lord, thank you. See that, see that. Nobody looking around. Just thank you. See those hands, see those hands. You're working on your relationship, but it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Two steps forward, three steps backward. Seems to be no progress. The Lord wants to fix it. He wants to fix it. And you may be here saying, Pastor, my relationship with Almighty God is not as it should be. I started off right. But somewhere, I find myself taking a detour. I lost the desire that I once had. Desire to even study the word of God. Desire to love the way that Christ wants me to love. And you say, cool, can you pray for me? Just take your hands to heaven and take it back. No, take your hands. Thank you. See those hands. See those hands. See those hands. Next week, the week after next week will be the healing service where we'll be praying for those who are sick. What are we do? Try not to miss that service. Because I believe that because God loves us, He'll do whatever He needs to do for us to show us how, how awesome He is.